Welcome to our coverage of the Extreme Festival. Yes, from Kailami on National Bri Day. It's a Wednesday and everybody has come out to enjoy the Extreme Festival and all its categories. It's great to see such big crowds and the family atmosphere here at Kailami Grand Prix of Entertainment. And we're looking forward to some hairy moments on the circuit as all our competitors get ready to take on today's action. It's time to bring them to the line and we're going to kick things off first and foremost with the Comsol Volkswagen Challenge. The second biggest category in the Extreme Festival but one of the most competitive. With three rounds to go in this championship, it's now time to start consolidating and getting everything sorted out. And unfortunately, Rory Atkinson already has had some issues. We had a bit of an accident on testing on Saturday before the race. Thank you very much to Help Racing and Carlos Nobre for lending us a vehicle to try and compete today. It's quite an important stage of the year and um, we're just very lucky that we're relatively close on pace. Looks like he's pretty relatively close with Ian Stevenson as well. <laughs> Looking at the way they're going to go out for qualifying now, it's going to be a tight battle in the A's, B's and C's. James Hurley though has been pretty dominant this season, Dave, and really the man to beat in Class A. He's got his act together with that car and I watched him all weekend set up. He's critical on his cars. You see them playing with tyre pressures all of the time, particularly during the practice sessions. It's really critical to get the right balance and set up on these cars. They're very tricky to drive. They're very loose around the circuit. And if they go off the racing line, because there's not much racing going on at Kyle Army, it's a big problem for them. So you've got to stay on the black stuff. Yeah, it's a green circuit as they like to call it. Rory Atkinson though did a great job to come up for second and Valdi Mikey's for third in Class A. Class B was all about Nathan and Ramsey and Class C is eventually going to Zander Ruiz. His dad, Voto, right behind him on the grid. Let's catch up with Valdi Mainke. He's chatting about Kyle Army. Yeah, it's great that somebody put money into it. I'm thankful for Toby and uh, Paul South Africa to keep the track in the racing fraternity. It's always great racing here. You know, it's, it's tough at this time uh, with sponsorships being uh, difficult to come by. So, you know, guys have to look after their sponsors and it's, it's very good that we've got some uh, excellent sponsors that uh, sponsor the series. Uh, and uh, we have to look uh, look after those guys, you know, because they make it possible for us to race, for the guys to have the TV coverage. And uh, yeah, thanks a lot to, to all of them. Well, poor South Africa, Toby Fender have purchased Kai Alami, and let's hope that things improve at this magnificent venue. And let's hope that we have great racing today, Greg, in this class. It's certainly going to be hot at the front of the field. It always is. Ian Stevenson with some great pace as well, looking to get up there with his teammate Rory Atkinson. It's not in the normal white Comsol car. It's the red one on the left-hand side of your screen. And big thanks to Halt Motorsport, Andre Halt, and, of course, Carlos Nobre for giving him that car. And he's looked like he's got some pace. In fact, he's got some great pace because this is the first time I've seen Harry Potter being bettered into Turn 1. Well, James Hurley got massive wheel spin off the line and Rory Atkinson looks over his shoulder. He knows he's run a little bit wide. Let's catch up with the start of the B class. And this is going to be one of the biggest dices we see here today. Look out for Lyle Ramsey. Here at Henning, also good qualifying. And now we go on board to take the C class action as we go. The lights turn green. Wayne Krauss on board with him in his golf. Excellent Not too much fun. wheel spin. Great start, actually. It's a great start there from him. We go back on board just alongside in there. And it looks like it's going to be thick and fast. Your Sean Krauss also getting a super start. And the two X35 energy drink cars right in the thick of it. But at the front end, look out for Batman. He has made a welcome return back to Class C's. He's a lot more comfortable in the big golf. And it looks like he's going to be running at the front end. Speaking of the front end, it's Hurley who's managed to get ahead. And I think that was due to the fact that Atkinson had an ever so slight mistake in Turn 2. Well, don't forget, this is a car that is new to him. He's used to driving his own car. Quite difficult to jump into another car and perform, but he's doing really well. Oh, look how twitchy that car is. Going through the S's. Unbelievable. Front end moving all over the place. Stevenson looking to find his way through there on Valdi Mankies. And right behind them comes Smallberger in uh, Herbie. Then in the Class Bs. Oh, Gossman is having a big time of it. Tyrell Governor Sami also had a super start. You can see him just tucked in behind and making their way through the field pretty rapidly. Pit Pocketer also looking for a way to get up there on Brad Hall. He's trying to get past Renier Klaassen as well. Oh, lots of tire smoke as they come up to West Bank. Leopold Ben. Then they go flying down the hill. 
fantastic. This is what's so great about this formula, Greg. A-class dice, B-class dice, and C-class dice. Rory Atkinson, whoa, look at him going up the inside of James Hurley. Has he got the drive? Has he got up to the king? Is he going to run on the inside? Oh, Hurley covers him. So Rory Atkinson is pushing all the way. Had to come out of it, and by coming out of it, he's opened up an opportunity for Balmy Wankies to sneak through into the final turn. Second place is going to change up here. Yes, indeed. Wow, Mankies, late breaking. Oh, much better drive from Atkinson. And yes, little tap. I think we might see a come on, let's get going here. Yeah, that's exactly what we expected. Great dicing here in Class A. Back to the Class Bs. Here they come fanning out for the final turn. Oh, it's extremely close. Gossman getting it all kinds of out of shape, but managing just to squeeze through there. How he found a way through on the 121 of Hall. That's also a brand new car there for Brady. So he's also getting to grips with a new machine. Great dice of Class B's and over here, Lyle Ramsey, unsponsored cars out front, tells us he might be going over to Polo Cup next year to take part in the Nationals, but this Class B dice is going all the way to the wire. Ramsey's got a couple of seconds on them right now, and they'll be looking to close him down. Don't you just love the fact that third place is Tyrell Governor Sami? Remember all the times we've seen him get to this position, he normally ends up in the kitty litter somewhere, and speaking of going to the kitty litter, that's Nathan. Nathan pulling to the sideline, he's out of it. That is massive for this championship in Class B. Lyle Ramsey now with a comfortable margin over Tyrell Governor Sami, and the man who should be fighting has only just made his way to, to, to third place right now, and that's Harrod Henning. Henning didn't have a good start at all. He didn't have a great qualifying. He was right at the back of Class B. Nathan out of the action as we pick up on Class C. Henry van Fede has got Jake Jacobs all over him, and Zander Roos comes through there as well with Voter Roos, and Elke van Fede, the bat lady, is just behind them having a great drive. A little bit uh, further down than what she'd like to be. She'd like to be up here with her husband, Henry, but the two of them not quite on the same pace. Now that Henry's come back in, Jake Jacobs is all over the back of the Batman looking for a way through in the Nathan's Motorsport Polo Classic, and Jacobs is looking to get ahead of that big jumbo golf. Look at the different lines there. Jake Jacobs has a huge amount of experience at the circuit. He used to be a GTI instructor at Volkswagen's Driving Academy, and you can see he's using that to big effect here to stay with the Batman. Van Fetter, rear wheel, airing it as he comes out of West Bank, down the mine shaft they go. Picking up on the Class B leader right there. Sponsor needed on the side of that car. That's Lyle Ramsey. But the big dice is behind him. Yeah, it's magnificent stuff here. Needham all over the back of his hall. And Claassen is on the back end of those two polos. Brad all on the inside. He's going to squeeze through there. And look at the change up here. Henning has found his way to second place and has found a way past on Tyrell Gamanasami. Andre Needham on the brakes inside the Piazza Motorsport polo of Brad Hall and edges him out onto the side of the track. This is great stuff and they're just off the lap record pace here today at Kyle Army and they come down into turn one side by side. Side by side into turn two, just squeezing out glass in there. Always out of shape. Oh, don't come off. You've got to stay on it if you come out of shape through there. Whoa. You've got to keep a front wheel drive buried. Otherwise, it's going to do exactly what Needham has just done. Sideways action, spins around 180 degrees, opens up the air brake, I mean the boots, and hits the wall. Bit like stock car racing in America, but I think he's okay. Car quite badly damaged. Right up at the top of the hill, James Hurley's got a tremendous lead now over Rory Atkinson. And Atkinson running off the side of the track. Manages trying to keep hard. it together, trying very hard. But it does look like Hurley's got this one covered. And, and now Rory loses two paces to Ian Stevenson and Derek Smallberger. Yeah, both of them squeezing through as Atkinson came back onto the circuit there. So a little bit of an issue. No problems for Ramsey. Check out second place. Henning still fighting off Tyrell Governor Sami. So the three polos in Class B. I wonder what's going to be happening down at turn two. Hopefully they've got that car cleared. Here comes Class C, and it's Van Fletter still keeping Jakobs at bay. Jake Jakobs having a super run, but uh, that Polo Classic just doesn't seem to have the issues. Oh, red flag called. So he must have completed about 75% of this race, and that's the reason they've called that red flag, and that's due to the issue with Needham at turn two. We go back a lap then because of the red flag situation. Hurley, Atkinson, Stevenson, Smallberger, Gavin Ross, and Pete Fasaki. That's the top six in Class A. Class B's goes to Ramsey with Henning in second place coming from behind. Gavin Dasami, Andy Gossman, Claassen and Needham. That's in Class B picking up on Brad Hall in seventh. Pete Parkita and the Steve McQueen Polo, Dion Holiday Jr., Dane Stewart and Darren Nathan. A super run from Henry van Fleder to win out the Class C's. Head of Jake Jacobs, Zander Ruiz beating out Vota. Elke van Fleder, the Bat Lady in fifth. Head of Gina Monroe. A good battle between the two ladies. Then it was Krauss, Masters, Wayne Krauss, Jacques Smith and Francois Fonsale. 
29 cars on the grid for race two as we wait for them in the pit lane and down in the pits tire wear seems to be critical and tire pressures once again critical what do we do with these tires greg i think what their issue is is the heat of the day as well dave it's really getting into these dunlop and achilles tires that they run so uh, as you said tire pressure is certainly going to be a crucial point to be looked at in between the two heats and tire wear so somebody has been looking after their tires in heat one i'm not sure about pete pocket if he was he doesn't really care about that he just wants to race <laughs> he just goes flat out no matter what the man from nell spray let's go into race number two and a great start from james Hurley. listen to that car wheel spinning rory atkinson a little bit left behind and it does look like smallberger in the beetle right next to him trying to squeeze him out into turn one i don't think he's going to beat the polo into turn one but the beetle slots into third place another good start here from ramsey tyrell governor sami goes with him has darren nathan been able to get back on track wait for the back end of the field do we see the orange car yes we do good job there from nathan's motorsport he's now going to come right from the back of the field and as you can see there are nine cars to get through on if he wants to stay in contention for class b's championship it's all about the points with two and a half rounds left in the series we go on board in class c for their start with wayne kraus looks to go between the two Two golfs right in front of him, his brother there in the X35 car as well. Yeah, the incredible Polo was our onboard man as they head down towards turn one. We're now on board with his brother as they are now pitching it in. Absolutely flat out. And Gina Monroe, while she had a super run in the first one, fighting with the Bat Lady, she's now fighting with the Crisis with the Bat Lady behind her. Yeah, it looks like Alka, not the great start. As you said, she normally is further up than that. So obviously a couple of issues around the track, but her husband has got Class C covered at the moment. Yeah, he's welcome back into the class that gave him the overall victory and Class C honours last year. So that's what he wants to be doing. Oh, that's out of shape big time. Zander getting to grips with uh, Alka van Vetter and spinning around. And the Bat Lady just oh. parks it in the wall. Another view from the X35 Energy Drink Car. And you can see, yes, Alka van Vetter getting nudged and car going off into the side of the track. I'm not quite sure if Zander was trying to do some uh, defensive driving there like the police do when you've got to try and take a vehicle out. But that's exactly what happened. And Alka is in the sidelines, hopefully be able to get going again. But we're back at the front and it is Atkinson trying to close down on Hurley. Look how close Henning is now that he started a bit higher up. He is right with Lyle Ramsey. Greg, I told you, it is stock car racing, these guys. They are, they are not scared to bump bumpers. Exactly. That's what it's all about. And to lose some wing mirrors on the Ramsey occasion. Ramsey coming under pressure as they go to the final turn. Lyle Ramsey has got Sherrod Henning all over him like a rash. Looking for a way through. Remember, he started at the back of the field in race number one. He's now started from second place on the grid for race two. And Tyrell, Governor Sami, doesn't quite have the same pace as he did in race one. Good pace out of Atkinson in the spare car, or I should say, Carlos Nobre's car. He might have got to grips with it a bit better now, but he still hasn't found enough pace to catch Harry Potter, James Hurley. And Rory Atkinson looking in the rear view mirror at a good sight there of Derek Smallberger in the Sabre Tech Beetle. Beetle not running the same kind of pace as what he is, though. I think this battle's pretty much sorted out if they can keep it all together. This one's not done just yet. Nathan coming through the field there. That's the Nathan Motorsport Polo. Look at the orange car as he charges through the field, having to start at the back of the grid of Class B for this race. And he's moving himself up into what is fourth place behind Tyrell, Governor Sami, the man in shot right now as he sneaks through and heads away from Clubhouse, but further back there, Pete Potkita under pressure. Good to see that Andre Needham's car has been repaired and he's back on track and he's fighting for honours there with uh, Klaassen. Andy Gosman in the Shamdor Vedak cars lost another place as Nathan goes further up on this field and great action as they come through at the top of the hill. Polo's one to four in Class B's and Nathan probably the fastest car on track in the Class B's right now as he starts to close things down. Jacques Smith also has closed up dramatically on the back end of Jake Jacobs. So that's a bit of a change up too in the Class C battle. Remember in the first race it was all about Jake Jacobs fighting for honours with Batman. Sean Krauss losing a little bit of ground. You can see the cars heading through the sweep and towards the bowl but Krauss hasn't got the same pace as them here in the back end of Class C. As they come down into the bowl, this is where the outbreaking maneuvers all take place because if you leave a bit of a gap, that's where the stock... Oh, we've already got an incident in the bowl. That's Sander Ruhr spinning out again. So that's the second time we've seen him go out. So a little bit of issues there for the young man. And oh, some issues a little further back as well. It was Gina Monroe he came together with. So he's taken out both the ladies now. Well, not on a date, that is. <laughs> he's taken him out on the track. Yellow flags are out. We've got incidents all around the track. The Tussin Interior's car of Rainier Klaassen gets towed away from the S's, so the safety car has been out. It pulls into the pits and racing once again with James Hurley, starter pack company, the front of the field. He's the starter pack man and he's looking to keep that start right at the front, but 
I don't know. Now that they've been pulled together, it looks like Atkinson might just pull out that ace up his sleeve and see if he can find a way past. He's going to have to work hard because uh, so far this season, Harry Potter has not been bettered. He has been the class of this console challenge and really no one has got to grips with the kind of pace he's found. Just to mention the Sabre Tech VW Beetle of Derek Smallburger, how much has that improved in the last couple of races as well? Yeah, it's time in the saddle he's been putting in. He's really put uh, a great bit of effort. Ian Stevenson, got to say, the, the boss man is certainly getting to grips with this racing. He loves to be involved in that pack, and he's got Fasahi on his tail. With Gavin Ross just behind them in the Norbrake car. So great dice in A-Class. B-Class, once again, the usual suspects. Ramsey Henning, uh, Nathan in the mix right up there now because of the restart. And uh, Tyrell Govan Sammy. How much has he improved as well in this day? It's brilliant to see. Then you can see the two worst boys fighting with Jacques Smith and the Batman. Van Fleder still hangs on to uh, Class C's win at this stage. And speaking of wins, well, he's trying to win our third place here and giving Tyrell a very good run for his money. Trying to find a way past. Will Nathan squeeze him out into the S's? Good possibility of that as they fly up the hill towards the west bank bend the old lear corp as they call it turn left nowadays instead of rice of course and james hurley has got over a second now on rory atkinson small burger half a second further back yeah there's a bit of a maneuver up the inside as we can see needham while he's getting forced wide there and uh, holiday is not getting it, making it easy for him that is for sure as they come out of west bank Atkinson still in second, Smallburger still for third, no worries and no changes up in the first three cars, a little bit of squealing of tyres there, but I think that might be due to the heat of the day as we mentioned in between the two races. Interesting that he just tapped off very slightly going through the kink, I think on good tyres they keep their foot buried, but at this stage of the day, late in the day with tyre wear, obviously having the button off just a little bit through the kink. Yeah, the Dunlops will definitely be crying out and hoping for that checkered flag, which is exactly what's going to happen now. And another double victory goes to Harry Potter. James Hurley and the starter pack Polo wins out for Class A. Class B goes to Ramsey as he comes across the line ahead of Henning and Nathan, who snuck through there for third. And then it was all about Henry Funfletter, Jake Jacobs, and in third place there, a super run from Vota. Let's take a look at the official results then. James Hurley on the starter pack. Polo wins out ahead of Rory Atkinson. Smallburger, Stevenson, Fasaki, and Gavin Ross in the Norbeck Polo. Great effort from Lyle Ramsey to win out the class B's ahead of Henning. Darren Nathan through to third. Tyrell Gavin Asami, Andy Gosman, and Brad Hall. And down in seventh place, it was Portkita who beat Needham, Holiday Jr., Stewart, and Clarsen. What a great day for Henry van Fletter in the Batmobile, picking up class ahead of Jake Jacobs. Motorus, Jacques Smith, Wayne Krauss, and Sean Krauss in Class C. Then it was Wayne Masters beating out Gina Monroe, Elke van Fletter, and Zander Ruiz right at the back. He managed to catch up with Class A, an overall victor on the day, James Hurley. He found out how his day had gone. It was a good day for us, championship wise, and pretty much everything. Wise. But I think it would be in a very different story if uh, Rory had his own car. Maybe if Aldi's car didn't break in the first race, I'm sure it would have been a lot closer. Yeah, so overall, a good race. Another fantastic day in the saddle there for Lyle Ramsey as he takes a double in Class B. Race one was a pleasure to drive. Darren had a bit of a problem with his car. Uh, got it sorted for race two. I saw he caught up very well. But this really improves the championship and I've got a high hopes for the end. Certainly a day of doubles as a double victory goes to the Batman in Class C, Henry van Fletter. Takes some time getting back into Class C. Very difficult cars to drive. And um, yeah, me and Jake's been talking. It takes about three races. This is the third race back. Yeah, back to number one.